All right, let's do this example that we just kind of started in class, which was uh, the example where we had two runners, one of which is to the west of a flagpole uh, by a certain distance, four kilometers, and is running six kilometers per hour uh, towards the flagpole, while runner B is on the east side of the flagpole running due west at five kilometers per hour. So how far are the runners from the flagpole when they run into each other, when they meet each other? All right, so as I mentioned in class, this is, uh, this could be thought of as a uh, compare two systems type of problem, uh, either cons comparing like before and after where they were at time one and then where they are at time two, uh, or looking at two systems before and after they interact. Right? Uh, and one of the important things is in this type of problem, you want to look for things that stay the same or, um, or will be the same. Right? So let's take that kind of strategy when we look at this problem. So what's going to stay the same? or be the same in this example? Well, the speed of each runner is constant, right? So the, they're constantly running at uh, four, uh, let's see, it was six kilometers per hour and five kilometers per hour, respectively. And by the definition of meet, uh, both runners must end up being at the same place at the same time, right? So that means the final positions of both runners must be the same, and the run duration for both runners must be the same. Okay, so armed with that kind of starting information, let's start working through the solution. First thing we have to do is figure out what are we actually trying to solve for? What's our goal? We we're looking for the position of the runners when they meet, right? We want to say, what tools do we have that will help us reach our goal, right? We're given things like the starting position of each runner. We know how that position changes with time. That's the velocity. And we know the relationship between velocity and position, which is that the change in position or the displacement divided by the time is the velocity. All right, the next thing that's useful to do is to draw a little diagram and choose a coordinate system, right? The other thing that's useful is to write down all the known quantities so they're not buried up here inside of a paragraph. So let's start by setting the x-axis to run east-west, right, with the positive x pointing to the right or east. We'll set the origin at the flag. Right now, we can choose our origin anywhere we like. You could have chosen the origin to be where the, the first runner is or even at the second runner. Uh, the math will all work out. You'll just end up carrying around extra delta x's. Um, but this choice, I think, works conveniently. Because if we do this, then we have the starting, the initial position. So x, a, i, meaning position of runner a initially is four kilometers to the west, which would be in the negative direction, so minus four kilometers. And he or she is running with a velocity of six kilometers per hour. Runner B, his position for runner B initially is at plus three kilometers to the right there, and is running with a velocity of minus five kilometers per hour because he's running in the negative x direction, right? Whereas the runner A was running in the positive x direction. And so he had a, he or she had a uh, positive velocity. Okay, so we'll write down all those known quantities, keep them kind of pulled out. And let's figure out what concepts or tools will help us to reach our goal, right? And here, the concept that's relevant is how is velocity related to position, right? And we know that for a constant velocity, right, then the con if, it's, if the velocity is constant, then instantaneous and average velocities are all the same thing. So we can conveniently write down that the, the average velocity is just the change in position over the change in time. Right? So if we write these down specifically for the two runners, then veloci the velocity for runner A must equal to the change in position for runner A divided by how long that runner is running. Right, the velocity for, uh, well, and this expands out to be the, the starting, I'm sorry, the final position of A minus the initial position of A, which is by definition delta x for A, run, for runner A, divided by how long runner A was running for. We can do the same thing for runner B. The velocity for B is the change in runner B's position divided by how long runner B is running. Right. Expand out the delta xb as 
xb final minus xb initial, right? The position of runner b in the final time minus the position of runner b at the initial time. That's what all that nomenclature means, right? But we concluded earlier that the the both the duration and the final position have to be the same for both runners, right? That's what it means for them to meet, right? So what we're saying mathematically is the duration for runner A has to equal the duration for runner B. So we'll make life easy and drop the subscripts. We'll just call it delta t. It's the same delta t for both of them, right? Similarly, the final position for runner A has to be the final position for runner B. So again, we'll keep life easy and just say that's the final position, right, for both of them. So using this notation, we can simplify these equations a little bit. Right? Instead of having all these extra subscripts, we'll just say the one and only final position minus the initial position for runner A divided by the one and only time, similarly for B. Right? So we'll keep those equations handy. And step four is now, let's remember that our goal here was to find the final position XF. Right? We're trying to get this variable. So we're going to rewrite our velocity equations so that we're able to solve easily for the thing we're trying to solve for, the final position. So we'll just do a little bit of manipulation here, right? We take, let's say, let's take this first equation. We multiply both sides by delta t so that I get VA times delta t, right, is equal to XF minus XAI. And then I'm just going to subtract the, I'm sorry, I'm going to add XAI to both sides, and then that cancels this, and I get VA delta t plus XAI, XA initial. All right, similarly for the second equation, again, to isolate X final in this equation, I multiply both sides by delta T so that I get VB delta T, and then I add the final position, I'm sorry, the initial position for runner B. Okay, bring that over to that side. All right, very good. Now have these two equations that are both equations for the one and only final position. For either of the runner's equations, we are given the runner's velocity, right? We were told what their VA and VB are, right? So we know the velocity of runner A and B. So if we just had, uh, and we actually know their initial positions too, right? We worked out that the first one started at minus four, runner B started at plus three. So we have, this variable, and we have this variable for both the runners. So to s figure out x final, all we need is delta t. We just need to know how long they were running for. And then we just plug into these equations and we're done. Right, so we need the duration, and we would be able to solve for the thing we want. So that means we have a new goal. This is a two-step problem. The new second goal, secondary goal, is to solve for how long the runners were running. Okay, so let's do that. We have two equations for xf that both involve delta t, right? And that's our unknown. So we have two equations with only one unknown, right? So this is definitely solvable. We can set the two equations equal to each other and solve for delta t. Right. So what that means is, since this is equal to xf, and this is equal to xf, then this must equal to that. So VA delta t plus xai is equal to VB delta t plus xb initial. All right, a little bit of algebra here. We're going to collect the delta t's, right? Get the delta t's on the same side. We do that by taking this and subtracting VB delta t from both sides to cancel that out. And then we'll subtract XAI from both sides to get rid of it on this side and bring it over on this side as a minus sign. All right? Okay. We're going to collect the delta T's and pull them out. So we have, pull it out of the parentheses. So we now have VA minus VB all times delta T is just equal to XBI minus XAI. All right? And that finally gives us delta T is just, we bring this over to the other side in the denominator, this quantity divided by this quantity, but all of these variables are known, right? So we have initial position of runner B minus 
the initial position of runner A. So that's 3 minus minus 4. And then the velocity of runner A minus the velocity of runner B. And we know that runner B has a minus a negative velocity, so that comes in with a negative sign, which gives us 3 minus minus 4 is 3 plus 4 is 7. 6 minus minus 5, same as 6 plus 5, that's 11. So that's 7 over 11. Notice the units cancel properly, kilometers divided by kilometers. 1 over hours, 1 over that brings the hours up top, and we have the answer in hours. It's about 2 thirds of an hour, 0.636 hours. All right, now we know how long they're running for before they meet, right? So, and we said if we know the time, we had an equation where this was known, this was known, we just needed this, we just solved for that. So for either one of these runners, we plug in, uh, we'll choose runner A, the velocity of runner A times the time we just solved for, plus their initial position gives us 3.818 minus 4, which puts our final position at minus 0.8. One eight, which if we go back and look at the diagram, uh, let me do that, going all the way back here, blah, 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 do, 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 back to this diagram, right? Negative would mean it's to the west of the flagpole, right? So the final position is some negative number over here, and that negative number turned out to be minus 0.18 kilometers west of the flag, okay, after running 0.64 hours. So note that if you wanted to, you could plug this time into the other equation, the one for VB and XBI, the one for the second runner, and you should get the same answer. That's a nice double check. Also, just a quick note, uh, we want to keep excess sig figs while we do the intermediate calculations, right? So even though we really only want to report it to two sig figs, I kept some of these intermediate values to three or four sig figs so that we didn't get rounding errors. Just wanted to make one last note uh, before we finish. You might ask, you know, this is a lot of work. Uh, how is an example like this ever relevant to anything we, we do in the real world? Do we really ever calculate runners running past poles? Uh, well, let me rephrase the question. So here's how the question was originally phrased, right? We could rephrase this problem as, uh, so we got two runners. They have a total of seven kilometers to run between them, right? Four to the west of the flagpole and three to the east, right? So there's seven kilometers to run between them. Runner A is four kilometers west of the flagpole and covers ground at a rate of six kilometers per hour. Runner B is three kilometers east of the flagpole and covers ground at five kilometers per hour. How long will it take them, between the two of them, to cover the full seven kilometers? And where will each runner be when that happens? Right, it's the same question, it's just phrased slightly differently. But let's rephrase it one more time, right? Except now we'll do it instead of runners, Let's say we have two doctors that share an office and have seven grams of a particular medicine between them. Right? Dr. A has four grams in his or her cabinet, let's say her cabinet, and uses up six kilograms per year. That's the rate she goes through that medicine. Dr. B has three grams of medicine in his cabinet and uses up five kilograms per year. Right? If they're willing to share the medication, how long will their combined supply of medicine last before it is all used up, right? And how much will each doctor have used in that time? Who will have borrowed from whom, right? It's the exact same question, right? And the exact same math would solve it.